Hi, good morning. Well, I trust that you had or you took the opportunity or took the time to read through the notes that I sent to you previously, um, yesterday actually, on conventional and non-conventional farming. If you have any questions regarding the previous uh, video lesson that I recorded, please ensure that you reach out to me and ask any question that you have. So the first topic, the first main topic that we have to look at in agricultural science will be conventional and conventional farming. So let's um, move right into it. All right, so conventional versus con non-conventional. What does conventional farming mean? How do we interpret conventional farming and how do we interpret non-conventional farming? Conventional farming is a modern farming method. So it was not practiced for thousands and thousands of years. It is of recent that conventional farming practices were developed. And the main reason for the development of conventional farming system was to meet the demands of the growing population. A few hundred years ago, our population remained relatively stable, around um, 1 billion human beings living on Earth. Today, we have over 7 billion persons living on Earth. Therefore, the way in which farming was done had to be changed. So conventional farming is a modern farming method that was used to meet the demands of the, um, of the growing population. It was designed to produce large quantity of food. And of course, if you're gonna do it this way, well then you're gonna do it to earn a profit. One of the ways in which uh, the conventional farming um, would take place is through monoculture. An example of monoculture is rice cultivation or sugarcane cultivation. Or um, so in some countries, they would clear large plots of land, large forested areas to just grow one single crop. Monoculture means that you're growing one crop on the same land year after year. And you would notice that that's the same thing that's happening with rice cultivation in Guyana. The same farmlands that are used to cultivate rice today, they were used for decades and the same purpose they serve and they're serving the same purpose so monoculture usually lead to the destruction of the environment usually very large um, plots of land are needed to grow crops using monoculture technique so what would happen is that large areas areas of forest would have to be cleared to ensure that the land is available for agriculture One of the traditional conventional uh, method is mixed farming. Well, this is kind of better than monoculture because monoculture, all that you're doing is going one crop year after year. But in mixed farming, and you should be familiar with these terms, monoculture and mixed farming. These terms were introduced to you in um, grade seven. So traditional mixed farming, that's, that means mixed farming means that on one plot of your land, you're growing crops and the other plot of land, you are um, rearing livestock. So this is considered to be more environmentally friendly. And one of the main um, advantage or one of the reasons why it is environmentally friendly is because the waste or the organic waste or the pen manure that is produced by the livestock that can be used to um, fertilize the plants. Non-conventional farming. Well, this was developed in response to the concerns of conventional farming. Conventional farming was um, destroy destroying the environment, as we mentioned. It was, um, you had to clear large areas of land and that lead to deforestation. So non-conventional methods were developed and the non-conventional method compared to the conventional method is more labor intensive. What does that mean? It means that you have to include more manual labor. Um, take, for example, on the image on the right, that's an example of non-conventional farming system, but you can't have large machines going into that area to plow the land and things like that. So most uh, more manual labor would be required for most of the non-conventional method that is being used. One of the negative or one of the disadvantage of non-conventional method is that it often produces lower yields. So you have less amount of produce compared to conventional method. And one of the, of the negative um, 
one of the disadvantage of conventional method is that you're using a lot of fertilizers, inorganic fertilizers, and those inorganic fertilizers are, are not good for the environment. However, in non-conventional um, farming, you're not using as much inorganic fertilizer, and that is one of the reasons why you may have lower yields. The food produced through non-conventional method are usually of better quality. They don't have lots of pesticides or pesticide residue in them, and they're safer or healthier to consume. And oftentimes they have a higher market value. For example, organic food, organic vegetables and so forth, persons would want to sell them at a higher price. And actually the cost of producing um, your crops using non-conventional method is usually more expensive. Again, if you were to look at the um, image there, you would see that to set up such a, such a system, it will cost a lot of money. And that is why the produce that is, uh, is, is normally sold at a higher price. So I hope that explains the difference between conventional and non-conventional farming system. Again, conventional is a modern system and it was primarily used to produce a large amount of food and to make a lot of profit. And because of the destruction that was caused um, because of conventional farming, non-conventional farming was developed and the non-conventional farming was developed to, in a way to save the environment and to use smaller areas to produce more food. So we are now going to look at some examples of non-conventional farming. And all of these were in your notes. So I hope that you had, you read through your notes already. So one of the non-conventional method is called aquaponics. This is not widely practiced, especially in Guyana. We, there are some um, areas in Guyana, there's some research being done in aquaponics, but it's not, as I said, widely used. So it's a combination of raising fish, as the image would probably um, explain it better. You're rearing fish. At the bottom there, you see the fish is in the tank and the plants are at the top. So what will happen is that the fish gives off their waste. When they give off their waste, the waste get, gets into the water. So nutrients in the water will increase and the plants will use that nutrient that is in the water. So in a way, the plants are dependent upon the organic matter that is produced by the fish. Then we have hydroponics. Hydroponics is growing of plants without soil. You do not necessarily need soil to grow plants because the medium that you use will contain all the nutrients that the plant would require for growth. So perhaps you would use um, just simply water and in the water you would have to add uh, different nutrients that the plant would require. So the image below are showing you some examples in which hydroponics can be used. Apart from soil, there are other materials that can be used in place of soil. So next we have grow box, and this is mostly used in um, temperate countries where you would experience winter. So the grow box is, as you can see there, the, the image clearly explains itself. It's a partially or enclosed system for raising plants indoors or in small areas. So during the winter season, when the temperature is very low, you cannot get certain plants to grow. So what you would, can do is to have, uh, for those individuals who are living in, in, in those countries, you can, they can purchase a, or they can create a grow box and the grow box will have a thermostat. So it will regulate the temperature. So the outside temperature, the environmental temperature might be very low, the place might be very cold, but inside of the grow box, the temperature would be suitable for the growth of the plant. And inside of the grow box, you have special light. You do not necessarily need sunlight to grow the plants. You would need certain radiation so at certain wavelength and so forth. So all of that is within the grow box. Um, you may, the person may only have to add water and have to add fertilizer. In a more sophisticated grow box, all of this can be adjusted um, and the plant can be fed water and uh, nutrients automatically. That's a more sophisticated kind of grow box. So that's an, an, another example of a non-conventional farming system. Of course, as you can see, this is very limited and it cannot happen at a very large scale. And if it does, um, if, it, if it can be developed in a large scale, 
it would be very expensive. So the produce here would be expensive. So the challenge is to produce a large amount of food using the system, but to produce the food at a low cost. And then we have what we call trough culture. So trough culture is the growing of plants in raised, raised troughs, or we can call them benches. And you have an uh, image there that is explaining it a little bit. So instead of soil, instead of using soil, you can use other materials such as coconut fiber, clay pellets, and so forth. And uh, the main thing is that you will have to provide, provide the other nutrients. And the nutrients are produced 